celebrating the power of possibility. Hey everybody, this is Leanne Morgan, and I believe that anything is possible. Welcome to Anything Is Possible, part two of my interview with the genius Leanne Morgan. I, I, I want to talk about this Netflix uh, special. So 2018, you're at an inflection point. You're about to open up a hardware store with a cheese wheel selling baby shoes or work <laughs> at Target and put up bedding, bedding at Target. Um, but you're at that point where you want to give up. You're a couple of decades into the game and it's just not working out. And then look at God. Look my at belief, God. My belief is no time is wasted. Like, and, and you know, you will, you will hit a point in your life where all of what you should have had gets multiplied on this side. Like, you, you're in the place where you would have been if, had, if the curve had been like this, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I think he readied you and steadied you for, for this right here. But you were at the point of, and then them little boys with that social media busted loose for you, and now you've got the eye of Netflix, which is right now, Netflix can change your life because the content stays and it, you know, and it goes. How did you get this Netflix deal? Well, uh, when all this blew up and I was getting a big tour and all that, it, it, was, it was a very difficult time because a lot of reasons. Like I, I went through an imposter syndrome thing. I, I thought I really probably should have been in therapy. Did you battle depression? Um, I don't know about, I have in my life, but I don't know it was so much that it was just I started having anxiety for the first time. I thought, I'm not worthy of this. These people, these darling women were coming up to me and saying, you got me through chemo. My husband left me. I don't, I, I've watched you at night. That messed with me. And I received it and it was precious. But at the same time, I thought, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. And then... I felt that too. So I went through all that. I, sh I wish I had journaled because it was an up and down kind of thing. And, and you know, my husband is so different from me and type A and how he deals with things. He doesn't have to talk things out. I got to talk everything today. That's like I said on that special, but I, <laughs> um, he would be like, what are you, look at all this is happening for you. And I go, I know. And it, but he didn't understand how the, all the emotions that go with it. But anyway, I was feeling all of that. And um, Lord, what was the question? Halloran? How'd you get the Netflix deal? Oh, how did that come about? Oh, you said oh let me say, let, okay. So I realized that the management I had, all these, that, and the agent that they had to drag in to help me, and they could not handle this. Like it got to a point where I realized I was in LA, I was doing the Kelly Clarkson show, there were some meetings in LA, and I believe God revealed this to me because he's always with me, that, okay, you, this is not working. And I thought, I've got to change management they cannot handle this because it went from down here barely doing to the biggest, you know, I have one of the top tours in the United States in the 1% of comedians touring. And um, it was very hard for me to fire that manager I, because I, everything's emotional for me and oh, but it's business. And it, but it, I went through a real hard time having to make that decision but I'm proud of that decision because I made that decision based on, I know I've got sense. I know that I'm, I'm not a business person. I couldn't go out here and run pilot. And I told you, don't give me any math problems. But I've got enough common sense that I knew this was not working. I've got to make a change. It was very difficult because I was with that manager for 14 years. And, but he could not do that this level. And I thought, I'm out here working like a dog I'm away from my family. This is my time. I got to hit it while it's hot because it's show business. And so I made that decision to 
change and go to somebody that knew how to handle all this. And I'm proud of myself as, a, as that little girl from Adams, Tennessee, 10 years old, you know, going, I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm proud of, I wish I could go back to that 17-year-old and say it's going to be all right and you know what you're doing, you know? When I was at UT and flailing and, you know, making terrible decisions and, you know, smoking life kitchen the tea, the smoking cigarettes behind the dumpster, dating people you wouldn't wipe your feet on, <laughs> you know? I did. I went through, a, there was a lot of things, and I, I wish I could go back and, t and say to her, oh, girl, just wait. It's going to be wonderful. But I was very proud of myself for making that decision that was very hard for me. So anyway, I... Uh, I uh, make that change. What was the question again? The Netflix special. Oh, yeah. So those people that I brought in were the people who make the big swings. And when I say the big swings, they're the people that can call Netflix and say, this is who you need to be looking at. And it took a while because I think Netflix thought, okay, she's selling out. She's got this big tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... You know, Netflix is an East Coast, West Coast kind of, th kind of thing. And when I had a meeting with them, they said to me, when they decided to do this with me, they said, we know that we have neglected the heartland. We've neglected the middle of the United States. We want to be in business with you. We want your demographic. And this is what I figured out in this whole thing. You know, I got a book coming out in 2024. My demographic still reads. My demographic still watches TV. They My still buy physical product. They still buy, buy, and they got the money to buy it and all that. So they realized that I was in a lane, like you said, that nobody else was in. But I've got the best agent and the best manager in the comedy world. So Big dogs. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. So they call Netflix, Netflix takes a hard look. Did they yes. drop that bag on you, Leanne? Did they drop that bag on you? Did they no, drop that bag? I'm not. Did they drop that bag on you, Leanne? <laughs> look me in the eye. Look me no. in the eye. No, honey, I'm not a Dave Chappelle. You know, okay, this is the deal. Uh, Some people get those big deals like Dave Chappelle, Taylor Tomlinson. Have you watched Little yeah, Taylor yeah, Tomlinson? Yeah, yeah. She's managed by the same people I am. Sebastian Maniscalco, Burt Kreischer. Like, people get... Well, I don't know what their deals are, but Dave Chappelle and Taylor Thompson get, you know, a multi-million dollar deal to do three or four. Now, I, I licensed to them. So did Nate Bargatze, gotcha. I think Jim Gavkin. Yeah. So I produced, I, we got the team together. We did all of that and then, then licensed it, it to them right. for two years. Then if they want to keep it, then they can take it another forward. That might be a drop of bag. Then, or I can take it and I can put it on Amazon.com or, I mean, Amazon, or I can put it on Peacock or whatever. But my manager said to me, Lynn, this is what we like to do now because your children will own that when you're gone. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my hand out you. I'm gonna get my mind out of your your bank account and get back to the comedy. <laughs> Look me in my eye. <laughs> so, but the live touring is where oh, it's at right now. My God. And it's booming. And I think we came out of COVID and it was a holy nightmare and we got Vladimir Putin and everybody <laughs> doing all this, you know, dark People times want are dark relief. and twisted. They want relief. Uh -huh. All right, let's talk about comedy. Let's okay. talk. I, I told you in our last episode, I don't buy the, it, it just kind of happens. And, mm -mm, not the woman I saw on this special. Um, your timing, you, so let me, may I, would you allow me the analysis? Yes, okay. I would love to things, hear it. Things that I've noticed. Um, your eye for detail, the detail that turns a story, your word placement, how you allow room for the joke to breathe. You don't seem like you're rushing, like you let the joke breathe, you let the audience um, how you use gesture, right? I'll give you an example. I mentioned it just a minute ago when you said, I was smoking cigarettes behind the dumpster. Great word picture. Or 
is that an eel? <laughs> right? Uh-huh. Talk to me about word choice and placement, because you have these phrases, take to the bed. You, you have all these, I know all of that is intentional. I think it's brilliant. And we were, we were watching it here in the studio, and I mean, people were raucously laughing watching oh. the video. Would you talk to me about process? And am, am, is my analysis correct, first of all? Yes, and I, I do. Um, I guess I have good timing. I believe in timing and letting something, you know, and and people can hear it and then you they can respond or whatever. And I also think that some words are funnier than other words. For instance? Butthole. Right. You, Funny. They're laughing right now. <laughs> They're, they're literally in the control room laughing right now as we're doing this. I can hear them, right? <laughs> the camera guys have been wanting to laugh, and they're trying to be quiet. Oh. When you said your daughter, what did you say? Was it alphabet cussing or? Sp- spell cussing. <laughs> spell cussing. That baby child you've met many a time. <laughs> we can't do a thing with her, never have been able to. She spell cussed all of her life. She's trying to cuss, Does cuss. this stuff just come, or do you think about it and go, this is a better way to say this. This is a way to get into the story, because your setup and punch, it really is. I think some of it, like when I say take to the bed, my people say take to the bed. So I, I have always, you know, been proud of being from the country and from rural people, and, I, and I've always brought that into my Act. I've never tried to change that, and I think that helps me now. I think I'm authentic. People know it, right? And I think that helps me. But um, my little daddy. I've always called him my little daddy. You know, he's six two. He's not little, but I mean, he's tiny, thin. But I. But I think details matter. I think I do. You know, if I hadn't done this, I wanted to be a child and family therapist, or I could have done the Jonesboro Storytelling Festival. I've it, gone up there and watched them. Are they not incredible? They are. Unbelievable. They are. But if you notice them in details where you can see a, a picture, like the Deaf Leopard and Journey, I've been so sad. That's been wonderful blessing that that went so viral, but I never got to perform it because I'd only shot it one time. I told that story one time. Well, then I got, kind of perfected it, but I wasn't getting jobs. I wasn't working that much. So when this thing hit, I was doing it in clubs a little bit, but people had already seen it, so I didn't want to do it. And I miss doing that because it's, to me, it's fun to do. Because I talk about Little Deaf Leopard, that little man came out and was frail. Little Deaf Leopard is a uh, lead singer, frail. His legs were that big. I've never seen legs so tiny on a man. His hair was down to here. It was thin. You could see through it. And I thought, thyroid. He's got thyroid <laughs> issues. And then he had a little bump, and it looked like he's got a hernia. He's got a hernia, and he had time to put a mesh in it. <laughs> I had all those details wait, wait, in wait. it. So, so, so he's got hernia, and he hasn't had time uh-huh. to put a mesh in Because he's been touring. It, right. right. But that detail, Lynn, is just, I'm telling you, I'm sitting back, and I'm going, <laughs> This is a smart lady right here. Oh, with the thank comments. you, Mike. Oh, let me tell you this. So I got this is why it's so special, and it makes me want to ball my eyes out. I was at, in LA during in January, and they got me a spot at the famous comedy store, where all you know, this the big one. Yeah. And I also did a show at the Hollywood Improv, and I sold out a show at the Hollywood Improv. But the comedy store, and they're and that's unbelievable. But the comedy store is where, you know, they Quentin Tarantino, yeah, yeah, Qu- yeah, and Quentin Tarantino's in the audience and blah, blah, you know. So I went in there, and it was all these young people, in this tiny room, and a, and a man was up before me talking about horrible things. I mean, twisted horrible things. And then I get up and talk about I don't know what I talked about, something about Maggie, my middle child, or something, and and it, it went well. And I was pleased with it. And we go out in the hallway and they say, get out of the hallway because they don't know anything about me. And they're like, get out of the hallway. (laughs) You know, like a bouncer, you're nobody, get out. But anyway, then these young people that had been in that show come up to me and they say, you were my favorite. And then they go, and I'm like, what? And they go, can I hug you? 
young people in LA wanted to hug me. And I think it's because you, the, everybody's just hearing all this terrible stuff. And I, I'm not a prude. I don't, I love Dave Chappelle, love Bill Burr, Chris Rock, love, you know, all them. But um, it's not even what they do. It's in these LA clubs and in New York and all that, people are talking about really twisted things. And I think they feel, and everybody thinks that's what we should be talking about. And everybody, in, you know, and I think I'm, I'm just different and I'm yeah. like a warm blanket maybe. I don't I, know. I think what it is, is you're you. And God has given you the courage to be yourself. And I think you've been given the calling, the calling of comedy. And I don't, I don't know if you've embraced your work in that way, but the kinds of connections that you're describing, that's a calling. That is not a career. I, you're, I believe in callings like to preach and to teach and to, you know, I believe people are called to, nur to be a nurse and all that. And I never thought of it that way of calling it like a calling, but I know I was called to. I, does that make sense? I, from the time I was a child, I mean, I thought, I knew, God revealed it to me. I knew it, that I was supposed to be doing this. And then through all these bad times, I would pray about it. God, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, and I'd get down. And he never shut that door. He never said to me. So. Yeah, Lynn, go work at the NASCAR track and pop popcorn. <laughs> you know, he always said, keep going, girl, keep going. And in my book, I talk about a scene when Chuck Morgan and I lived up in Marstown where he was raised. And there was a really, we had been through a lot financially and him changing jobs and it was a, that was a bad time. And I remember I was riding in a car. I got locked out of a double wide trailer. I was pregnant with my third baby. I had to walk down the road and get a ride with a woman so I could go to church on Wednesday night because they had supper and fellowship and a service, and I always loved it. And I walked down a gravel road with two babies and big pregnant and had to get in a car with a woman who smoked generic cigarettes in, in a car that had rusted out and I could see the highway in my on my on under my feet. And and she was, she was a lot. But anyway, I was, I, and I remember thinking, because Chuck Morgan has always taken wonderful care of us and a wonderful provider, but it was, and I'll explain all that someday. But anyway, I, I thought, this is a low point. How did I get here? What in the world? My little children were in this car with this woman smoking this generic cigarette and saying horrible things, cuss words. And, and, and I said, God, what, you know, what in the world, even though I had, I had started selling jewelry and I had knew I was making people laugh and I was, and I, in my mind I thought I'm going to Hollywood. I don't know how or what, but I remember thinking, what in the world? And he, and he spoke to me and said, it's all gonna make sense to you. <laughs> and now that's in a book, and that's gonna be in a book. I mean, it, but, he, but, and I know that sounds like I'm crazy, but he, I heard him speak no, to me, Leanne, there's a reason, there is a reason for it. Get, just be patient with me. It doesn't sound like you're crazy. It sounds like God is faithful. I, I, I was studying um, vineyards, right? And, and a vineyard, the, the growing season starts with the falling of the leaves. And there are 320 days of preparation for 45 days of harvest. So most of the work doesn't produce fruit, right? Uh -huh. And so, Sometimes in our life, it's work, 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 and you don't see any fruit, any fruit, any fruit, any fruit, and then the fruit comes. And the beautiful thing about a vineyard is you get a season of fruit, and then it rests, and then another season, and then another season. And that's what I'm seeing in your life, work, 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 and now fruit. And Halloran, let me say this, that could it have not been God's better timing because when I would be with you and saying, I've got to deal with ABC and Warner Brothers for a sitcom, and then I've got one with Nick at Night and TV Land and Matt Williams is writing it, I would have had to move to LA without my family. They would tell me, they'd go, you, you would have to move out here, Land. don't let your husband quit his job because it's likely the pilot will get shot and then it will get canceled. 
like or or you need to work on it until they pick up so many episodes. Can you you know I could not have left my children and not raised them. When I look back on all those things that that would fa fail or didn't happen or whatever, and I'd be you know so sad, and I I think I one time I went into a depression over it. I look back and I think, oh my gosh, God's timing is so much better than what I thought. Because now mine are grown, my baby's 25, they don't need, they need me, but they don't need me like they did then. I got to raise them in Knoxville, Tennessee. I got to take them to CAK every day, pick them up. I got to go to ball games. I got to go to band. I got to, you know, hear them sing in junior praise. I got to do all of that. <laughs> when they, when people interview my kids now, they go, what in the world did you think about? And they go, well, we knew she was a comedian, and Nick at Night would come and film us and stuff, but she was our mama. Like, we didn't know any. She was always our mama first. So, and and I've had people in this business say to me, Lynn, you've got both worlds. Look, you've got to have most, both. Most people, most people don't end up, so we will end where we started the special that's on Netflix that you executive produced, that you wrote, the way you ended it with your family. You're all there. And you got the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne Morgan, thank you for being on Anything is Possible. You angel, thank you for having me, my dear, precious Howard. Mm.